Hey, what's going on, y'all? Check it out real quick. This is not going to be long at all, I swear. I just wanted to show you this cool trick or tip when you're trying to create bass lines. Let's go. But hey guys, real quick before we get into it, if you haven't visited the Bass Nation Academy by now, I strongly suggest you go do so. There's much more available at DerekVinnett.com, including hours and hours of step-by-step -step tutorials that'll help guide you to that next level. On top of that, there's loads of topics and categories that we cover. There's even access to full interviews with some amazing bass players, as well as live stream webinars exclusively for members only. All right guys, so head over and check it out for simply no cost to you at all. You get a free three-day training trial to go ahead and poke around the site and see how it fits you. So links to the Bass Nation Academy can be found in the description below. And I'll also put some other links in there. I know you guys ask me a lot about what gear I use. I'll put those links down there as well. All right, guys, so enough of that. You can either go check it out now or when you're done watching this video, on to the lesson. All right, guys, so the theme of this lesson is chromaticism. We're going to be talking about that a lot. I'm going to be using that term. So chromaticism, basically take a bass line, or I'll give you an example. A lot in gospel when we play bass lines or playing a chromatic baseline or, or a, a baseline with some chromaticism in it. So let's say for instance, we're playing from the one to the five and that happens a lot in gospel or that praise break style of music, uh, playing from the one to the five, we have to figure out a chromatic way to play it. It creates more of a drive in gospel music. So we're playing from the one, say if we're in a key of C, we're playing from C to G. So from the one to the five. So we have to figure out how to get to the five. All right, so we're playing those notes as chromatic notes. I know that's the degrees are three, four, sharp four, and five or flat five and five, okay? So, but let's just call them chromatic note, notes because that's what they are. We're playing those connecting notes, consecutive notes, half steps are chromatic notes, either way you look at it. All right, so we're playing, all right, so we're playing three notes away from the actual note that we need to get to or from the tonic. So one, five. So we're starting from the E to get to the five, to the G. Then we're starting from the A to get to the C. Okay, so those half steps make up for the time in that measure or the beats in that measure. So when I first started, I was playing that for years and didn't really know why or what it was called or really didn't care at the time, really, to be honest with you. Uh, but I just heard other people playing it. But I tried to think about different styles, different genres to where I can implement that. So this concept of this chromaticism, to be able to lead to the next note or to the next degree or progression in the scale or in the song, something as simple as going from the one to the five, I thought simpler. You know, I thought like maybe let's take like a funk groove and let's think chromatic too to be able to create a bass line. So with this simple loop, I'm just playing on top of a dominant seven chord. Uh, there's actually a nine in there if you listen closely. On top of that chord. But you can still play the C mixolydian scale. You get the idea. Okay, so I'm thinking about how I can use that chromaticism with the chord tones. So let's think about the chord tones that we're using for a C7 chord, right? So we got C7, C, E, one, three, G, the five, B flat, which is that seven. Okay, so I'm using those chord tones for right now. So I got C, E, G, B flat. Let's work with it. So I'm gonna use a little bit of chromaticism. So I'm leading up to that note, to the, each chord tone. I'm leading up to it. So I'm playing E flat, E, G flat, G, B, uh, A, B flat, right? So, da -da 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 -da, right? Sounds pretty cool, right? So we can just put that in a groove or in the beat of a, uh, of a bass line. See what I mean? So you can even go a little bit further. So I'm just using one note, one one chromatic note to lead up to that chord tone, but we can use two, we can use three. So it's a really simple concept, guys. All I'm thinking about is the notes that come prior to the chord tone. So if I'm playing that two note, Okay, so I'm playing C to E, but I need to get to the E. So I'm playing D, E flat, E. Same with the G. There goes that chromaticism. Now, the only thing with the B flat, doesn't sound as good when you go from the A flat to the B flat. I mean, it works, but what I like to do is just, I like to play the B, uh, or I like to play the G, sorry, G. So I'll repeat the G. And 
instead of the you see what I mean it sounds it sounds a little bit different both work so try them and see which one you like but I'm not telling you exactly what to play and that's why it's so important for us bass players to know exactly what's going on in the music to be able to know what chord is being played so we can know what chord tones to build our bass line off of so let me show you a little bit more using that method with the two chromatic notes in front of the chord tone And it's so funny, this is how I create a lot of my bass lines, especially if I know what the chord tone is. That's why I like to use a looper to be able to play the chord on top of it, just to make sure uh, my notes are correct and I can hear it. It's a difference when you're just playing it and thinking about it, thinking about the bass line. Let me stop this real quick. Uh, thinking about the bass line and, and just trying to guess and see if it sounds good or not. So you can play that on top of uh, the bass line on top of the chords. Uh, that, like I said, it's so important for us to know uh, so we can be able to practice a little bit better. I'm just playing through a looper, simple looper, uh, nothing special, you can find them anywhere. Uh, but I love this practice tool. I talk about this tool all the time. Um, it's so beneficial to your practice regimen or your practice routine. Uh, so you can hear these chord tones, you can play by yourself, you can practice by yourself without having to play with a band all the time to be able to practice. So. That's just a little tip, little, I didn't want to be too long today. Uh, just think about the concept. I always talk about that. I always say the concept, the concept, the concept, but I, I truly mean think about the concept and run with it because this concept can be applied so many different ways. That's why I, sh I show you guys the concept first or the way, one way to do it. And then you can go ahead and flip it and figure out different ways to be able to play it yourself or make it your own. Because all I did was I ascended. You can you know you can ascend you can descend i talk about that all the time the ways that you can switch this up there's no right or wrong way i'm just showing you guys some tools to make it a little bit more interesting make sure your notes are coming out clean clear and precise if you guys have any questions make sure you do not hesitate to ask me i'll see you guys in the next one peace